Hi, this is Zach, and I'm having a quick look at the HGL Tech F3 V4 Pro. Flight controller, OSD, and VTX, uh, with a PDB built in as well. This review will not be covering all of the features of the board, because there are plenty of good videos for that already. But what I wanted to cover was a couple of observations that I have right from the start. Straight away I noticed that the mounting holes of this board are actually 31.5 millimeters apart, which is one millimeter wider than a standard NAS board. I don't know if you can see it from this video, but the NAS32 board is definitely visibly shorter than the V4 Pro board. Whether this proves to be a problem when I build this board onto a quad, I guess I'll find out, but hopefully the use of plastic screws will give me a little bit of flexibility. The UFL cable that comes with it is actually an RPSMA cable, so uh, you'll have to either order a new UFL to SMA cable, or in the interim I'm just going to use that small adapter that I've borrowed from a friend to go from RPSMA to a standard SMA antenna mount. My focus for the rest of this review will be on powering the board up, just enough to test the VTX function and how much power is being output at each of the settings for 25, 200 and 600 milliwatts. Okay, I'm back. I've soldered my battery connector onto the tab. Uh, I've decided to go with a short cable that I can zip tie to the side of my frame to protect the tab from uh, being pulled off if I have a bad crash. I've also used a little 470 microfarad uh, 25 volt capacitor that the uh, board came with just to reduce spikes and uh, interference from the power system. I'm not sure if I'll leave it there in the long term, but for testing purposes, this will do for now. So uh, next, I'll be connecting the uh, UFL connector to the board and, uh, and then an antenna initially just to make sure that it's actually transmitting. There we go. So uh, I'll put an antenna on that and uh, turn on my monitor as well. Okay, the moment of truth. I've got the antenna hooked up to the board. Now I'm going to power it up for the first time. I don't know what channel this board is transmitting on initially, so uh, I might just need to adjust my monitor to find it, and um, we'll go from there. Okay, right now it's not transmitting anything because I've actually got the VTX transmitting button turned off. I'm just going to flick it to on now and then start trying to find the signal on my monitor. Right, that's a good sign. We've got uh, two lights which means it's on 25 milliwatts. It's on channel 6 at the moment. Now I've just got to, uh, to find it on my monitor. Okay, we're back. I managed to find the VTX signal and the OSD, obviously, on the uh, little monitor. It was on band D. Next, I'm going to disconnect and plug in my Immersion RC RF meter, and uh, I'll get some measurements happening. Okay, I'm ready to go. So uh, I'll connect up the board. First thing I'll do though is uh, I'll flick the switch so that the VTX is not transmitting, just to make sure that uh, the switch is actually working. So I'll plug it in. Zero milliwatts. That's a good sign. Okay, now I'll turn the VTX on. Okay, so we're on D1 and on the 25 milliwatt setting, I'm looking at about 31 milliwatts. It does change as the uh, system warms up. So um, I'll just take a reading that that's approximately 30, which is pretty good. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is switch the VTX to um, a higher power. So the two dots at the moment means, uh, you probably can't see it properly, but just here there's two little dots, which is 25 milliwatts. I'm going to hold the button in. Now there's one dot, so that's now should be transmitted at about 200 milliwatts. And what I'm seeing on D1 on this setting is actually uh, about 300 and... 16 milliwatts, so I'll write that down and uh, I'll continue with the other channels
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and change it to 600 milliwatts now. The lights are both off, so uh, it's now transmitting at top power. Back to channel 1. I'm actually going to unplug and give the uh, VTX a bit of a break because I can feel it getting quite hot now. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I've given it a couple of minutes and the board is cool again, so uh, here we go. Okay, lights are off, so uh, 600 milliwatts uh, is the setting on channel 1. Uh, interesting, I'm only getting about 469. So, uh, alright, I'll go back through the channels and I'll be back in a bit. I've just been flicking through the different bands A through E. I think E is uh, race band. And what I've found was that the power output was very slightly higher on E than any of the other frequencies. Even over time and also changing through the frequencies, um, each one just seemed slightly higher. So what I thought I'd do is I've got it on E1 right now. I'm going to plug the power in and I'm just going to watch it and see what happens over maybe a minute as the board heats up. So you can see it starts off above 500 milliwatts and this is on the 600 milliwatt setting. Whereas before I was only getting measurements of about 460, 469. It is starting to come down so uh, I'm just going to sit and watch. Okay, so it's been on for about two minutes now and you can see it's dropped from 500 milliwatts gradually down to 420. I'm hoping it's just uh, because there's no airflow over the board and that when it's actually on the quad and being flown around it's going to get a little bit of airflow which will help it uh, keep the power up. I'm also not sure whether this immersion IC meter actually changes its measurements over time as well as it has been plugged in for too long. Okay, I think I've done my testing. I'm pretty happy with the results. I mean, 600 isn't 600, it's more like 460-ish. At least on 25, you know, it looks like it's holding at about 30 milliwatts. And on 200, it's holding at about 300 to 316 milliwatts. So um, they're pretty reasonable and I think quite comparable to some of the other brands like uh, Foxtech and uh, Aonway uh, transmitters, which typically put out a little bit more than what they say as well. And uh, that'll do. I think I've pretty much tested what I wanted to test today. Uh, the next time you see me um, might be when I've actually put this board into a quad. Cheers and thanks for watching.